Okay, this is a two liter TDI Volkswagen group engine and uh, pretty common engine. And there it is, it's in a front wheel drive car. So what we're gonna do today is we've just done a service and we're just gonna talk about this, uh, the fuel filter. We're gonna replace the fuel filter and this particular one has a supplementary fuel pump. So you may think this is dead easy, uh, what's he showing this for, but uh, in this video I'm going to show you a wee bit more, you know, regarding the uh, fuel delivery system on this car, and uh, we'll get a few rags in here. Changing the fuel filter itself is a doddle, you know, there's nothing to it, really, and, uh, but we're just, uh, we're just going to go through a few specifications. This one here with the, with this supplementary fuel pump, as it's called is uh, a wee bit unusual, let's say. Uh, you tend to get those in the in the more horsepower Volkswagen uh, TDI uh, diesel engines. This one here has, uh, I think it's 170 horsepower. So I'll just get a wee, uh, a wee dish to put these wee screws in. There we go. Right, so we'll take all these wee, it's five wee, wee screws, and a wee torque screws and we'll get them in there. Uh, take them all out. One at a time. And in this, uh, this change, you don't need to really disconnect any hoses. So just get a a few more rags in there, all around it. So, later on in the video, I'm gonna show you some Volkswagen service information of specifications and uh, pressures and stuff like that, um, what you need to do when you're changing one of these filters. So we're talking screws out, and we'll just get a few more rags in there, and we'll give this a wee prize up here. Yeah, that came all right there. So if the, the hoses are going to impede you here, it might be a good idea to disconnect the fuel. And then we can pull her away from the, the filter. That's it. And get the head, the head up out of the way. And we can pull our filter. Now, this is full of diesel. So it's probably a good idea if we take this thing out, stick your finger in the middle of it there. And just let her drain out. So what you can do is, what the Volkswagen information says, is they actually uh, actually drain all that out of that canister. But, so we'll get that, that out of the way there. And uh, we'll have a wee look in here, just to see if there's any uh, sparklies, if there's any uh, bits of metal or anything like that. So, it does say in the Volkswagen service information to, to drain this out a wee bit, to suck a wee bit out of it. And that's just basically to prevent uh, any sort of overflowing. And uh, while we're here, we'll get that ring off. Oh, we'll get that out of the way, ready for a new one. And uh, yeah, there's not much to it, but uh, as I say, what we'll maybe do is, uh, we'll, we'll show you the, the specifications of these pumps and uh, we just need to make sure that we don't get any diesel all over the place because you, you definitely don't want diesel to get onto your Tama belt cover or your auxiliary belt or anything like that. So uh, it's just a wee bit of car required. So they're filter out then. Uh, we'll have a wee look in, see if there's any metal fans or anything like that, uh, any debris. So uh, see if it's nice and clean, but I'm just gonna clean this one out. It doesn't look too bad, but uh, we'll, uh, Suck that diesel out there.
And that'll let us get a proper good look in there. So, uh, yeah, it looks perfect. So there's a few wee, a few wee bits of dirt. So we'll just give it a wee clean out with, with a towel. So we'll just give it a wee clean out. So, it's a wee bit of dirt now. Not very much. On the uh, the PD engines of these, uh, sometimes they, because the injectors are in the in the engine, and they sit in oil, engine oil, you can actually get a wee bit of engine oil in the turn line. So I've seen uh, these canisters on the PD engine, the pump juice engines, pretty pretty black, and uh, pretty messed up. This is a common rail, and. Uh, you don't tend to get that in the common rail because it's different design. So there's a couple of these specks of dirt there. So <clears throat> we just got a new right old ring on. Give it a wee, uh, give it a wee saturation with uh, with diesel, and uh, let's see. We'll pop our new filter in, and uh, let her get in and and get. Uh, Get that head married into it like that, and she should go in. She's going nicely, and we'll just give her a press down. There we go. That's it. And get her bolts back in. So just get her bolts back in here one at a time. Here. Now let's press down. So in the in the service information, what's going to show you is uh, you don't don't actually pull this down on the O ring. You don't pull the head down onto the canister on the bolts. Uh, you want to press it in first. I I have seen these leaking, so tends to leak out there. Just leaks around the edges, and that's because the the O ring hasn't been seated correctly, or it's uh, came out of its uh, groove. So we'll just do that for all of them and just give them a wee nap up. Don't have to be super tight. So that's just holding it down. So that's our torque bolts tightened down there. I'll just go around them all nice and evenly and uh, make sure they're tight. So don't have to be super tight. Uh, so you'll just snap them or you'll ring them. So with our rags there, we'll just give her a clean up. Because inevitably you will be a wee drop of diesel, but uh, not too much. Um, no over overflows at all. So that's fine. We've got plenty of rags all out of the way. Make sure you remember to take them rags out. So we now have an empty canister. So this would be the same if you know you got the type of filter. It was uh, it didn't have a, an insert. And it was just an ordinary canister, so there's going to be no diesel in it at all. Uh, probably a lot of people would probably like to keep a lot of diesel in that, but it doesn't really matter because you've introduced air into these lanes. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing this. I have a scan to the bi direction control. I'm going to run these two pumps. I'm going to run the pump in the tank first to fill this up, and then I'm going to run that pump, and that's to put it back, uh, put the diesel into the high pressure pump. There's Buckets of warnings on Volkswagen not to run these dry, not to run air through these. You need to all the air out. So if you haven't got a scan tool, the fighter action control to do that. What you need to do is identify the return line. Uh, so what a lot of people do is they would maybe try to suck a bit of uh, diesel through the, the line coming from the tank and, uh, you know, put it, do it that way and try and get diesel into it or... Out of this out of this one so which is the the one going to this big pump now that'll, that'll, that will fill this canister up that, that would do that indeed but you still have air or you still have air pockets in these lanes so uh if we identify the components here we're going to easily identify what ones a flow and what ones a return there's a couple of ways of doing this uh volkswagen generally have uh the white markings if there's white markings on the pipes that's a flow, and if there's blue markings, now the markings may be underneath the clips, 
or you may see markings you may see markings with a blue on the blue writing on it there so if you want to see if you can see that blue writing there so but what you can do you can just follow the line so this this here is a strainer that goes into the high pressure pump and if you look at the the leak off lines over here you can follow follow the lines as well so there's a couple of ways of doing it and uh blue for return as in your arteries that's how i remember it and we'll just get any pipes back into into place there so i'm going to run the scan tool and i'm, I'm going to do it that way but uh you can put a vacuum pump but it's absolutely essential if on this particular car if i turn the ignition on it will not run the fuel pump and you'll just end up cranking this and cranking this and cranking this and that high pressure pump will be turning dry and you don't want to do that so the scan tool connected up and uh, we'll have two options here auxiliary fuel pump relay and electric fuel pump relay so this one here is the one in the tank and that one there is that one so we're going to run that so this will run it on and off and that will fill this canister up i don't know where you can hear that So you maybe hear a bit of gurgling there. So we'll run that down to fill. So I'm pretty happy that canister's filled there. That was running for about 30 seconds. I'm now going to run this pump. And uh, we'll go for that. I'm going to hit start. And we can hear that. Giving it a go there. And we can hear the fuel go back into the tank. And hear the tank bubbling at the back of the car. So we don't really need to do that that much. So I'm pretty happy enough with that. And uh, we'll go ahead and start the car. So here we go. Start right away. So no problems at all there. We'll just check for leaks. Yeah, good job. So we've made up a wee slideshow uh, for you now. This is uh, genuine Volkswagen information. Now, uh, please do not ask for this. I can't provide. I can't provide this or send this to anyone. This is. I have to pay for this. So this is uh, genuine Volkswagen dealer information. And what I'm going to show you is a wee bit more on specifications, pressures, uh, fuel delivery, and a wee bit more about the fuel system in these type of cars. Uh, especially the ones with the, with the two, uh, the two in line, the two pumps, the two uh, electric fuel pumps, as well as the the high pressure pump, the mechanical pump that's on the engine. So first of all, we see they're removing and installing upper part of fuel filter. That is a diesel extractor. So what it's saying to do is uh, remove some of the diesel, if not all the diesel, out of the canister. So whenever you put the uh, new filter in, it will overflow. And you don't want diesel going on your auxiliary belt or any other components for that matter and uh, especially not anything made of rubber or whatever it'll uh, you know it'll do damage to it and uh, that's that's the reason why it's showing to do that the next wee bit is uh, that special tool now really you can just use any sort of lever tool like a screwdriver or something and the other note is that caution note uh, do not pull hoses off fuel filter cover and do not lever on unions. Uh, lever and pulling leads to leaks and damage to the upper part of the fuel filter. So uh, that is just a, a note to treat them with a bit of respect and you can't actually uh, damage them or, or rip them, whatever. Uh, I do have uh, a pipe that has was leaking 
I'll maybe just show you that later on in the video. So remove engine cover and all that, remove those five bolts there. And uh, that's the wee lever tool, lever not onto the head of the canister. Uh, as I say, you can use a, a screwdriver or something for that. So that is uh, pretty self-explanatory. The head, the O-ring, the filter itself and the canister. And installation then is showing you to put the, the O-ring in, in the it's, uh, groove there. I have seen those leaking. Um, so you need to make sure that is, uh, is, is properly seated and then correctly. Uh, it says to moisten the seal with diesel and uh, make sure that is going to go in nicely, that the O-ring doesn't come out of its, of its seat. So caution note is uh, do not tighten the bolts for the upper part of the fuel filters. It lies completely in the lower part until it lies completely. And uh, that's basically saying don't uh, pull the head uh, down with the bolts and uh, you know you want to just press it into place first nice and, and gently so that's basically it on that pretty self-explanatory you might you might think but uh, just a few cautionary notes this uh, is the fuel system uh, in its entirety so I'll just uh, show you the, the warnings on this uh, talks about cleanliness and uh, stuff like that but here's uh, something that I'll just show you um, if components of the fuel system between the tank and the high pressure pump are removed, i.e. the filter or any other pipes, uh, or renewed, the fuel system must be filled to be bled. Uh, it is important to, allow, to not to allow the high pressure pump to run uh, while empty. So we'll see that warning later on as well. It occurs a few times. But uh, we'll go on to this fuel system uh, schematic here. So... The bottom one there, number one, is the tank with the uh, low pressure pump. Now all that low pressure pump really does is bring the fuel from the back of the car to the, the front of the car. And number two is the filter. Number three then is the supplementary uh, electronic pump that's in the engine bay. So we can see there, uh, supplementary fuel pump uh, V393 is only in vehicles with a 0.5 bar fuel system. So that is uh, 0.5 bar is the, is the one in the tank. Uh, just a wee note there to say that the, the designation was changed from uh, supplementary fuel pump to fuel pump two. You can see in the left there. So the other uh, components that were uh, detailed in that wee schematic there. Number four is a filter strainer, only in vehicles with a 0.5 bar fuel system. So the filter strainer is number four there sits on top of the high pressure pump and uh, that pipe is in reality only only about two inches long but we'll see a wee picture of that in a minute number five is a uh, fuel temperature sender uh, it goes on to number six is the high pressure pump itself number seven is uh, an inlet metering valve and it calls it here fuel metering valve n290 with a wee note uh, must not be removed and uh, yeah, well, I've removed a few of them, but uh, number eight on the right hand side of the, the rail is N276 fuel pressure regulating valve. So that's number eight here. And number nine is the rail itself. Number 10 is fuel pressure sender uh, G247. 11, non return valve. That is a wee non return valve that's on. On the leak off pipes there and uh, you can see the arrows for the direction of, of uh, the, the direction of flow for the fuel there and that we and that we schematic so maybe that'll that gives you a wee bit more understanding it's fairly simple but in case you're you know you're wondering what some of the components do and uh, stuff like that so uh, let me see and 12 is the injectors so moving on to that in tank pump a few specifications this uh, check and fuel pump delivery pressure and that's the range of engines that this is applicable to and uh, this is the 0.5 bar pump that's in the tank so it's basically saying to check it at the uh, at the at the pump itself there and uh, it's specification minimum 0.5 of a bar here so we'll just this this other wee bit uh, if specifications are not attained, 
check delivery rate of fuel pump. So we'll have a wee, I'll just show you that. We'll have a wee look at that. Delivery rate then is basically the flow rate. And it's saying here, uh, get a container that's greater than three liters uh, and an oil, an old oil container or something would, would do that, I would say, something like that. And uh, okay, voltage at least 12 volts, blah, blah, blah. And activate fuel pump for 30 seconds. And let me see, where is the spec? Ah, there we go, down at the bottom. Specification is 1,000 milliliters uh, per 30 seconds. So that's one liter uh, for 30 seconds or two liters a minute. And uh, that is the flow rate of that in-tank pump. So that's, what that, that's basically saying the secondary pump or the supplementary pump, as it's called up here, which is the pump that's in the engine bay, uh, the electric one, not the uh, not the high pressure one, the mechanical one. This is the spec of that. That's the uh, Volkswagen tester there, and uh, it's shown here to test it at that we fuel strainer. So that's that we pipe that I showed you earlier on. That uh, is, is smaller than the, on the schematic, and uh, that the idea of that is uh, so that the whole system is being tested including the strainer so you want to test it there is what it's suggesting here and specification then is three and a half bar and uh, again check whether fuel filter is blocked if, if it's not attained check unions check pressure gauge for leaks check lines in their connection check whether fuel filter is blocked and again check the flow the delivery rate there so Bleeding after you you change the fuel filter. So there's that caution note again. Uh, the high pressure pump must be filled with fuel before the engine is started. Uh, the high pressure pump must not be allowed to run while empty. So what this is saying is the high pressure pump, the one that's run off the camshaft or off the cam belt, is lubricated with the diesel. So you must not try to crank the engine or, you know, uh, you know, you're going to introduce error when you change these fuel filters and you don't want to run the high pressure pump empty. That is, uh, warnings are, are quite rife in, in, this, uh, in, in, in this specifications here. So bleeding the fuel system, uh, bleeding fuel system or whatever, depending on the software version, the fuel pumps will now be activated for a total of three minutes and start the engine and check for eggs. So uh, that's basically it. But the, the big takeaway there is do not run the high pressure pump uh, with uh, air in the system because uh, you, you could do cause damage. So maybe that gives you a wee bit of more information, a wee bit of food for thought if uh, you're trying to diagnose any, any issues uh, with the, the low pressure side. So just for giggles, I've put a pressure transducer on this filter and uh, I did that before I changed the filter and I did that after I changed the filter and just took a couple of captures just to see if there's any difference in the pressure. So that pressure transducer is in this, uh, this bit of pipe here before that supplementary fuel pump. So what we're measuring is the uh, flow and pressure from the pump that's in the fuel tank. So it's going in, it's going through the filter and out before it goes to that pump. And we're doing that with the, the engine not running and uh, it's being pulsed by the scan tool. So there's a trace on the Pico from the uh, fuel pump that's in the tank. So this is the scan tool pulsing it and then it knocks it off, pulse it, knocks it off and it builds the, the pressure up as you can see there. So this is the old filter. Uh, this is before that it changed that that fuel filter there. So if I drag our, our cursor down here, we can see it sits roughly around about eight PSI or thereabouts. You can see it okay. So that wee bit at the start there, so it builds up the pressure to six and then another pulse builds it up to seven or eight. So that's dead on. 
so if I remember that's the that's the old filter. So I'll go into uh, file here and we'll have the new filter loading up. So it's exact same connections, exact same uh, time base, same settings. Uh, you know, I didn't touch the 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 laptop at all uh, for this. So I left that running a wee bit longer, and we can tell the from this trace just if I if I point out that this uh, tails off. So it's a wee bit a wee bit longer trace, but uh, I did it on uh, both of channel A, so they're both blue, but uh, I changed the color. I was able to change the color of uh, of it of the uh, the first trace. Uh, so we're, we're gonna merge them, merge these two traces, and see if they're they're any different. So again, we're looking at 8.2 PSI, so very little difference, and uh, didn't really expect that. This car, you know, with that old filter in, they had no wrong complaints, no drivability issues, but this is, this is just to see if, they're, if, they're, if you can actually see any difference in them. So what I've done there is uh, I've put them both into uh, this overlay program, uh, that you can get in Windows 10 for free and uh, we can change the so I've labeled it the one with the tail off there is new filter just to remind us and if we, we dim that down a bit uh, I have the original trace uh, the first trace in red now I might have to bring in that because it's a wee bit difficult to see so hopefully you can see that better uh, that's the two we have forms merged there. So just to remind us, the, the new filter is the blue one. Uh, I have it labeled there. It goes on a wee bit longer just. So we'll have to assume that the scan tool is pulsing this for the same time and duration. Uh, and at the same time, uh, I don't see any reason why that would change, but uh, it does look the same. And uh, the two of them are roughly the peak, more or less the same, as you can see. Well, pretty much the same. There's no real difference there, so we can see it starting off. But what I, you know, what I'm taking from this, and if uh, if anybody out there interprets this differently, then for for play to you, you know, fill it in the comments. Tell me what you think. Uh, but the blue one is dropping off there quicker, and then it's raising up quicker. Which is the which is the new filter? Remember the the blue one is the new, so it's raising up here before the red, and it gets earlier here before the red, earlier here before the red, earlier here before the red. To it's totally out of phase here, uh, almost, uh, and it gets closer to this peak and closer to this peak and closer to this peak and closer to this peak. So if I look at it, if I had to run that on, that would I ended up. So the, the blue one is actually a current quicker. It's getting up the pressure quicker. Uh, this, the pressures are the same, PSA is the same, but it, it's actually uh, achieving that pressure faster. So that's what I'm taking out of that. And uh, as I say, the, the old filter wasn't giving any problems, but uh, that's a difference uh, the new filter made. So finally, one last thing, just to tell you, if you do see diesel pulling in here, uh, this is all wet and all, what could be your problem that's worthwhile checking, and what I've found is this is a pipe that's one of these pipes. It's not off this car, it's off a car very similar. And what happens, if this can come up in the camera, is it starts to crack there, uh, where the band is on the inside of the band. So with uh, capillary attraction, it sort of runs down the bottom of that and uh, ends up sort of pulling on the uh, on the top of the canister. So that's just one wee thing to watch out for. Is uh, the reason why that pipe's bent like that for the you know the engine moving back and forward. So it takes quite a while now. Uh, you know, in higher mileage cars, you might you might see that, but that's that's what I've found that those pipes crack and leak. After a good, well, cars with loads of miles on them anyway, after they get a bit of age on them. So there we go. Uh, maybe you got something out of that video. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, all the best. And uh, thanks for watching. And bye bye.